Ryan. I'm Sonia Betts. I'm the head of library publishing and digital production services at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. My invisible co-presenter is Doris Wagner. Um, she's a public services librarian also at the University of Alberta. Um, and she's home in, um, in snowy, icy, icy hinterland of the north right now. So um, I'm really excited to be talking with you today about uh, Canada's library and publishing scene and what that actually looks like within the context of other publishing activities happening in Canada. So just to give you a little bit of context, um, like many university libraries across Canada, the University of Alberta manages an active open journal publishing program, um, and I'm sure many of you who are in this room right now are sort of in the same boat as us. Uh, we have about 65 open access journals participating in our service at the University of Alberta, and these journals represent a pretty broad range of different kinds of publications. So everything from small student publications to very large uh, international publications with large editorial boards and many decades of publishing experience. Um, OJS has been a foundational element of our service since we launched back in 2007, and I think it's probably fair to say that uh, PKP and OJS have been instrumental in establishing the current Canadian publishing environment. So I don't think that's overstating it too much. So I've been working with our publishing program now for about four years, so I'm not you know, that old in the game. Um, I, I was a web user experience librarian before that. Um, and this project grows out of many conversations and questions that I've had um, over that time would be trying to understand what the role of programs like ours is within Canada's broader scholarly journal publishing ecosystem. So we're just one of many players in this field. Um, and I also feel like there's a perception both from inside libraries and from other stakeholders um, that library journal publishing or hosting programs are just a small and sort of minor piece <coughs> of the Canadian journal publishing landscape, and then what we're doing is not really publishing. Does that sound familiar to anyone else in this room right now? A little bit, yeah. Um, I think we think of ourselves in a, as a, an alternative option to mainstream publishing. We're like the other little independent guys that you can go with um, if, if the big publishers don't meet your needs. Uh, but is that really true? So there's been a lot of research conducted around Canada's journal publishing landscape, uh, but very little of that has really examined the detail of library publishing and hosting activities. So in 2010, Kathleen Shearer, who now of course is with CORE, um, offered a really useful review of emerging models in Canadian academic publishing. And at that time, she suggested that library-hosted journals represent a small but growing minority of the academic journals published in Canada. Okay, so jump forward to 2016, um, a study sponsored by RDT called uh, Shaping a Collective Future solicited, solicited some feedback from a number of journals affiliated with RDT, uh, the Canadian Association of Learning Journals, and the Federation of Humanities and Social Sciences. Uh, in that study, no journals affiliated with the library publishing program were explicitly included, although I think a number of journals that responded to that survey probably were affiliated with some library publishing program. Okay, jump forward another year, uh, in 2017, John Walensky published an article in the Canadian Journal. Do you guys know that guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he published a journal, uh, an article in the Canadian Journal of Communication called uh, Modeling a Cooperative Approach to Open Access Scholarly Publishing, a Demonstration in the Canadian Context. Um, and it examined and built on some of the data that was in that RET study, uh, but also um, he suggested that in 2015 there were 36 libraries in Canada hosting 270 journals. So that's starting to get to be quite a large number of journals. So also in 2017, the final report of the Canadian Scholarly Publishing Working Group was released. This was a group of stakeholders brought together by the Canadian Association of Research Libraries. I just showed all the acronyms, I think there are so many. Um, so, Canadian Association of Research Libraries included library consortia, learning journals, university presses, uh, RED, PKP, and others. So, this study provides an extensive overview of the Canadian publishing landscape, including articulating some of those strengths and weaknesses of that, that current landscape, um, and also provides a set of guiding principles for scholarly publishing. There is a very brief section in that report, it's less than a page, uh, that outlines the library publishing activities Canada acknowledging that library publishing programs are significant players in the scholarly communications landscape. Um, and it references back to that same Linsky article. Um, but it also characterizes library publishing programs as often more rudimentary than traditional publishers and doesn't really provide any clear recommendation for moving them forward or place them within the context of other different kinds of publishing activities. So I think it's safe to say that the existing research out there does indicate that library publishing programs are important to the Canadian publishing ecosystem. 
But Doris and I wanted to further explore the question of how they fit within context. Um, so simply put, how do we stack up against other independent Canadian journal publishers? So, I'm just going to warn you that everything I'm about to say from this point forward is based on very preliminary data that we've collected. Um, we have lots of very messy incomplete data. We have lots of unanswered questions that need to be addressed through follow-up and further investigation. So just so we understand we're all on the same page here. Caution. <laughs> preliminary data. So what did we do? Um, so we're in the midst of a, a little research project right now that's trying to understand the nature of this, of this field. Um, and step one is for us to create a master list of Canadian scholarly journals. So in the various regions that you all represent, is there like a list of journals published by your country, a helpful directory that says these are the journals that belong? No, not for Canada either. Um, and, and that's a little bit unfortunate because it's quite a challenging task. Um, so luckily some colleagues were, I have, who are working on a related project were kind enough to share the preliminary list that they sort of drafted with me um, as a starting point. Um, so just a few definitions for you, because this is really like difficult to sort of pin down and clarify what actually we're looking for. Uh, so we define scholarly as a journal that disseminates original peer-reviewed research. Uh, we're excluding student journals from this study. Um, and then the definition of Canadian is just like, good luck with that. But here's what we're going to try to do. My working definition is a journal affiliated with a Canadian post-secondary institution, or the journal is owned by a Canadian non-for-profit organization, so one of those learned societies or associations, or the journal is published by a Canadian-based publisher, so not one of the large multinational corporations. So I don't know if that's a perfect definition. I'm happy to like have any of you out there help me refine that, uh, but that's where we're starting. So the first version of our master list was created by pulling titles from RED, the Ulrich's Periodicals Directory filtering for Canadian publishers, uh, the Canadian Research Knowledge Network has a list of open access library publications, uh, and the Directory of Open Access Journals, again limiting for Canadian publishers. So the next step is to work through each title on the list, every single journal that we pull from that list, and try to identify who's the publisher for each title, discard any journals that are ceased, discard any student journals, and discard any journals that are published by the large multinationals unless they meet one of those other criteria. Um, every time we identify a journal published by a new organization, we're doing a browse of that organization's title list, their publisher list, uh, and adding any titles that aren't on our master list, and then identifying which of those journals are being hosted by libraries. So you can imagine that's a lot of data crunching and cleanup. It's really, really slow, but it's also very interesting. Um, if anyone would like to contribute to this work, I would love to crowdsource a little bit of it, so just let me know. Uh, we then took that list of publishers, and again, this is quite preliminary, we haven't gotten through all of the, uh, the titles on our list, uh, but we took the list of publishers represented to date and com completed an initial scan to try to compare publishing services offered by libraries um, and non-library publishers by looking at their websites and other sources of publicly available information. All right, as so now it's going to take some bets. Oh wait, no, not yet. So we have to talk about this first. <laughs> so <laughs> defining what is a publisher, I think, is even more difficult than defining what is a Canadian journal. Does anyone else struggle with this? It's, it's a really interesting problem. Um, and I want to pause here to address this thing, because it always crops up when we talk about libraries and publishing. Uh, Vanessa, you probably come across it on a regular basis. Within this domain of work, there's always this underlying question of what publishing actually entails and whether what libraries are doing in this realm can be called publishing. So, um, I'm not the first person who has thought this. Uh, Jacqueline White Appleby, Jeanette Alvaro, Andrea Kosevic, and Karen Meyer Klein, I think a few of you may be in this room right now, um, published a wonderful article in 2018 called What's in the Name? Exploring Identity in the Field of Library Journal Publishing where they examine some of those factors that weigh into decisions around whether a program calls itself a publisher or a host. And it turns out that it has far less to do with well understood and agreed upon common definitions of what a publisher is and what a publisher does, and instead seems to be um, a much more complex and at times very inconsistent construction of how individual libraries' perception of what publishers might do, uh, how their own programs align, how they want to be perceived both internally and externally, and where they might land on some kind of a continuum of how much and how well they do the work of publishing. So that's pretty complicated. Um, 
Publishers themselves seem to be a little bit ambiguous, too, about what the labor of publishing entails. Uh, do any of you regularly read the scholarly kitchen blog? Sometimes? <laughs> so, uh, Kent Anderson publishes every two years um, a list of how publishers add value and uh, itemizes a number of things that he thinks point to what publishers add um, or do within the realm of journal publishing. So, uh, in 2012, I think the list was 60 things. In uh, 2018, the list was 102 things. But they're very granular sorts of things, like make money and come up with a business plan, um, which I would argue aren't, aren't necessarily unique to, to publishing. Um, so I asked one of our graduate students to do a little bit of digging to try to find the standard definition of what the role of the publisher is with regards to journal publishing. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised that that's kind of a difficult task. Um, it's probably equivalent to asking someone, like, what is it that libraries do anyways? Um, but she tried. So she dug up an old article by R.G. Dunn and P.T. Shepard from 1991 called Publishers, The Critical Link. Um, they argue that journal publishers provide a production and distribution system that permits the widespread dissemination of reported research throughout the world without the researcher having to bear the burden of answering individual requests. Uh, in 2010, the Association of American Universities held a scholarly publishing roundtable and drafted some useful principles again for scholarly publishing that included editorial integrity through peer review, creation of adaptable business models, improving accessibility and functionality of publications, archiving and preservation work, and promotion of creative reuse of research. So, and if ever a, a Cambridge handbook was good for something, uh, you think this would be it. Uh, but the 2013 Cambridge Handbook of Journal Publishing does not provide a helpful articulation of labor of publishing until the very last chapter, when the authors are musing about the future of the publisher, and I quote, well, for now, there are key functions of registration, certification, dissemination, and preservation may seem to be, seem to be as important or better. The reasons for this may be changing. So publishing then, I think, um, at least at this early stages in my understanding and trying to define what this work looks like, has very flexible boundaries. Um, the are we or aren't we a publisher conversation, I think, actually distracts from the fact that we're actually doing publishing work by any of these kinds of definitions. Um, we may not do everything, and there may be a variety in how well and how effectively we accomplish it, but I think that's probably the case for any other publishing entities that are practicing today. So um, I'm here to say, like, library publishers just own that, own that realm. It's okay, from my perspective, anyways. All right, so any guesses on how many Canadian journals are Shout out a number. Okay, I'll just tell you. <laughs> uh, so again, um, this is really... So we think that there's probably, if, if you go according to the definitions of use, and again, you describe things like student journals, inactive publications, and the journals published by the large multinationals, we think there's about 1,000 active Canadian scholarly journals being published right now. The number on the list as of Wednesday was, what, 1,010. So we've classified and reviewed nearly three quarters of the titles on that list. So we've looked at each of those titles and then added and removed and added and removed. And we've still got a big chunk left to go. So about one quarter of them, we haven't reviewed each individual title. So just keep that in mind. Again, <laughs> question ahead. <clears throat> a little concerned this is being recorded. <laughs> Um, so this is where it sort of starts to get interesting. So this is a chart of the number of journals by types of publishers as we've classified them. So so far in Canada, um, again, according to that of the three quarters that we've classified so far, libraries are publishing 389 of the scholarly journals being published in Canada. Not-for-profit presses, so I included some of the titles published by RPD and the National Resources Council has a press as well, um, are the next largest number at 202. Um, You'll see it's really interesting, the third largest number of uh, journals are being published by um, what I might classify as questionable publishers, and this will really require some additional exploration, but these are publishers that have appeared on blacklists, publishers who may have um, an OA press, but no journals in the directory of open access journals, uh, publishers who actually, whose actual location can't be clearly identified and make sure it access to the local restaurant. Um, I don't want to say who they are because I think that that's not entirely fair, but we do need to do a little bit more investigation. Okay, next on the list, that green bar is university presses with 40 titles. Um, the purple bar is commercial presses with 50. <laughs> and then I know the independent um, society self-published journals is only five right now, but a reason for that is that the big chunk of unclassified journals, that gray bar, 
Um, we've left the, the small individual titles to the end. We dealt with all of the known entities first, and then I think we're going to start knocking off uh, the individual publications later. So that gray bar of unclassified titles is going to distribute probably mostly through the last like four or five classifications. All right. Um, a slightly more interesting way to look at it for me is this. Um, so to view that data a little differently, you'll see that when it comes to what we might think of as the market share that we occupy in Canada, collectively libraries publish nearly 40% of scholarly journals. Um, and that's by far the largest sort of group. <laughs> Again, those unclassified titles will filter through the other five pieces in the chart. Um, but in four months, things will be a little bit more clear. But this is really, really interesting to me right now. So also pretty interesting are the different kinds of services that libraries are doing to support those nearly 400 publications. So, so far we've identified in our list 32 different libraries publishing journals in Canada. Uh, nine of those libraries didn't have any information about their publishing program available somewhere that we could find it. Um, for the remaining 23, we reviewed the info on their websites and then we also, if it was available and they had an entry in the library publishing directory, we included that information as well. And we tried our best to map out their services. Um, to some categories and that we define based both on how library and non-library publishers describe sort of the basket of services that they offer to their clients. Um, however, I'll just say that only a few non-library publishers actually describe what they do in any detail. So comparing libraries um, to the other publishers is a little bit tricky right now. It really requires some follow-up and sort of in-depth exploration through uh, maybe surveys or, or conversations. Um, I'm also pretty sure that the publicly available and explicitly mentioned information about what library publishers are doing is not entirely accurate um, and also will require me to follow up with the people that I know involved in this work to sort of verify that, that we've got it right. So not surprisingly, every one of the 23 library publishers offers up access to publishing management software as one of the foundational elements in their service. And in Canada, that software is almost exclusively OJS. The next most common service is uh, support for new journals to get started in publishing followed by training for the editorial team, DOI registration, support for transfer from another publisher, um, consultation on policy, ISSN registration, and digital, uh, digital preservation. So you can sort of see through these services offer this like library sensibility around relationship development, um, around education of our community, and then paying attention to things we feel are part of our domain already. And you mentioned this in your, in your talk a bit. So uh, things like permanent identifiers, preservation, and discovery is work that we do in libraries all the time. So we feel pretty comfortable, I think, offering those services to others. So the least commonly offered services, it turns out that none of us are printing and mailing anything, which does not come as any surprise to me. Um, and only one of us is actively promoting their XML publishing service. So hopefully that changes after Wednesday's workshop on XML publishing workflows. Um, most library publishing programs are open access, so the low number around subscription management makes sense to me. Um, and then you'll see that they're sort of low on things like copy editing, proofreading, typesetting and layout, and marketing and promotion are not that common at all. Um, so I suspect those things are usually seen either as the domain of the editorial team or the domain of like that traditional publisher role. Uh, right now, only three of the 13 non-library publishers we've identified listed any services in their publicly available web info, so I didn't want to chart it out because it's just not a very good um, amount of data. But of these three, I'll just say that none list digital preservation, digitization, training for editorial staff, consultation on policy development, or consultation on dissemination as services that they offer. Um, but all of them list support for new journals, transfer from another publisher, publishing management software, marketing and promotion, and ISSN registration for service offerings. Right. So just wrapping up a bit, where are we going next? Um, for this project, our near-term goals are to just finish cleaning and categorizing that master journal list. It'd be really great to feel like we have a solid body of data with agreed like, upon definitions that we can work with. Um, I'd like to confirm and validate data about library publishers' activities, and then survey publishers to document their publishing activities as well. And then I really want to document and share the results of this work widely, uh, because I think the underlying goal of this research is to advocate effectively um, for and educate about this work that libraries are doing, not just within libraries and universities, but outside, and especially um, when it comes to participating in really important national conversations that we're having right now about our whole scholarly publishing infrastructure and ecosystem. Um, I want to know what the gaps are represented within our publishing activities, and to sort of try to understand what kind of collective action we could take together that would strengthen our publishing programs as a whole and support the work um, of scholarly publication in Canada. 
So really excited to dig in and learn more.